Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 264. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, Christopher Groff has dug up DOS games backslash PD1 backslash WF200. Not exactly sure what this is going to be. Um, still don't have much to go on here. An add, edit, font, LST, WF. It's a lot of executables and a lot of doc files. Huh. Hmm, I guess because WF was a, the directory name, let's try edit wf.doc. See what we got there. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of forgot that we have an edit executable here. So if I try to call DOS's edit program, it's not going to work properly. <laughs> okay. So okay, because I completely forget where exactly I put it. So let's do, let's just do edit from here. So edit C prompt wf.doc. Okay, there we go. WF version 2.00, copyright 1990-92, Marion Brent, Barrett, all rights reserved. WF's word puzzle game for one to five players of all ages. Puzzles may be one of seven categories, miscellaneous, phrase, quotation, title, thing, person, people, or place. Fun for the whole family. Okay then. Okay, so how to play. Each player takes a turn of... Oh, <laughs> I was, I tend to read ahead slightly while I'm voicing what I'm saying. And I, my, my eyes hit this and it was like instantly figured out WF stands for wheel of fortune. So this is a wheel of fortune clone. So I don't think I need to read the rest of the rules for that, but although this is interesting, there's a whole bunch of special commands you can put in during the course of the game in order to adjust things. So you can add players, you can remove players, you can change the name of players, and there can be up to five players at a time. Um, you can set up, set it to go to a new puzzle, reset a game completely. There are a whole bunch of other doc files here too. I'm guessing add is probably, yeah, creator add to the wf.datpuzzle file so you can put your own puzzles in place. And then edit allows you to edit the puzzle file. So that's kind of weird that you would have two separate programs for editing and or adding new stuff. And then LST allows you to list the contents of the puzzle file. Yeah, that's a, you would think that would all just be combined into one program instead of being four separate programs. Well, three separate programs. But I didn't see anything about like registration details or anything. So I guess it's possible the program is freeware. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. So WF. Um, oh, gotta go back to C-Prompt. WF. Okay, so we got some colors going on here. Do you have mouse control? Um, I don't see a mouse cursor. Eh, probably not then. Um, so we got a bunch of commands at the bottom. I guess plus or minus players. Or, wait, you have to hold Alt when pushing those. So... Yeah, you can have up to five players, although it seems to work with just one. So, Alt-1 to edit name, so it'll be me. And I guess, well, I guess we're just playing the puzzle already. Although I can reset the game, just or new puzzle. So, new puzzle, or that's Alt-N. You sure? Yes. Okay, so place. So, I guess we're just going to spin. Well, that's interesting. It's like a thing on the side there. And now the bigger question is, is there actually a time limit? Because normally in Wheel of Fortune, you have a time limit to put in your response. Here, there doesn't seem to be one. Like, I'm not seeing one, and I'm talking long enough that if there was a time limit, it should have expired by now. So, I guess I can go with P. There are no P's. So, I guess since I'm the only one playing, I guess I'm gonna spin again. 
So for a thousand points, guess a letter. I'm gonna go S this time. Okay, a couple S's. Um, buy a vowel. I'm gonna buy an O. No O's? Huh. Okay, buy another vowel. Vowel. Gonna buy an I. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with a T. Okay, I had a funny feeling after seeing some of these letters here that T was going to be a big one. Oh, duh, it's the United States. Okay, so United States, there you go. Okay, so that seems to work okay. So press any key and it immediately goes into a next round. And this time we're looking at a title. So we're going to have to spin because you always start in each round with nothing. Um... Uh, well, if it's a title, chances are there's a T in it. Yep. So might as well spin again, go for an H, see if there's any extra H's. Nope, just those two. So I guess I might as well buy an E. So we got the cash now. Ooh, that's a lot of E's. Um, I'm actually going to buy an another vowel, and I'm going to buy an I. Okay, so no I's. So that last word there, that's going to be an interesting one because it ends with an E and most four letter words that end with an E have an I in them. <laughs> so, hmm. Okay, going to spin here and lose all my money. Great. <laughs> or did I lose all my money? I, like, I still have a hundred for some reason. I thought bankrupt would have lost me all my cash there. Uh, I'm going to guess L. Okay. Not where I expected it to be. Um, well, let's just put in that N there, because we know that's going to be endless. I have no idea what the last word is. I've never heard this title before. So even though I don't know what this title is, I am going to take a guess at the answer here. I think it's going to be The Endless Game. Oh, I got it. Because <laughs> I was just looking at the letters available and the letters that made sense to fit in there, and the fact that it's a title, and that seemed to make the most sense, even though I've never heard this title before. So yeah, that was WF, a Wheel of Fortune clone that's very basic, but you know, it works. It's got some graphics to it and everything, so you know, I've, play I've definitely played worse Wheel of Fortune clones, let's put it that way, but um, one thing I find interesting is there's like no information whatsoever in terms of like freeware, shareware status or anything. So I'm guessing it's probably freeware as a result of that, but eh, who knows? Either way, plays okay. Next up, Ben Gemmett has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash Axtrons. Well, I'm going to guess there's probably going to be some kind of text type of theme going on here. A batch file, document, executable, registration details, and top scores. So I'm just going to guess just based on those files as where you've got some kind of shooter or something. But anyways, edit axtrons.doc. So, oh, this is another one from Christopher Gunn. Like, we've, we've seen some stuff from him before, so... Axtrons is distributed as shareware on an I trust you basis and is not in any form to be considered public domain or free. Considerable effort went into creating the program and I am retaining full protection under the copyright laws. However, I also want you to be able to share my games with your friends, so please feel free to hand on as many copies as you would like, as long as you include all the original files. And apparently registration fee is $10, so right off the bat, um... <laughs> Like, I mean, there, there was this thing that was going on with the early days of shareware, this whole concept of an honor system where if you don't, if you play the game for more than like X number of days and you need to register or remove the program from your computer. And there wasn't really many ways to enforce this. Like some people tried to enforce it, but usually there were easy ways to hack around it. But the thing is, is that... <laughs> Doing doing this kind of a spiel here is almost like trying to say, yeah, I get that that's the way it normally works, but I'm not going to really hold it against you if you don't. But I kind of encourage you to. <laughs> Realistically speaking, if a if you distribute something for free, 
then it's free. So the shareware version of something, you can't really depend that somebody's going to delete it because they don't want to buy the full version or something. Like, I mean, what if you're a kid? Like, this, sh this shareware stuff was sometimes all we had <laughs> because it was so expensive to buy new games. Okay, so Axe Thrones combines a simple arena-style game board with a fun introduction that sets the scene. The object is to eliminate your opponents by setting traps or direct combat based on the opponent's energy level. Even if you try to stay out of their way, the... Cliaxistrons? Is that how that's pronounced? Cliaxistrons are very good at tracking you down. To add to the scene, the crowd around the arena toss power coins, which are picked up to add strength. All the rules are explained inside the game. You know, this almost sounds like some of the stuff I used to make. Um, one of my old game projects was Star Gladiators Extreme, which was basically just two ships on a board duking it out with weapons that they would pick up at random. So this almost kind of sounds like it's going to be like that. Okay, so cursor key to start your player in the desired direction. To start your player in the desired direction. Yeah, this is sounding even more like my own games because I didn't know how to do like buffered keyboard stuff back then. So I had to resort to like push a direction once to start moving in that direction. And then you keep moving in that direction because you can't hold the key down. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, you can change your direction by pressing another key. Yeah, the corner keys on the number keypad will let you move diagonally. Okay, so we're going to be using the American keypad. Good to know. Um... Yeah, not sure what an unlock state to set. Uh, spacebar, if you want to stop, tab, or shift. Tab keys to speed up or slow down to action. Your best defense and offense is to drop a pattern of grids as quickly as possible by pressing the G key. Huh. So it looks like there's going to be some interesting, um, some interesting methodology with how this game works. Well, let's see how it goes. So, well, I, wait a minute. <laughs> That's a big batch file. Um, type axtrans.bat. I don't want to do anything scr screwy here. Um, it's files on your hard drive with other batch files and axtrans in its own directory. No change should be required. Please save a copy if you adapt this file for your system. Okay, so it looks like... It looks like the batch file is weird. Um, you know what? Let's just do axtrans.exe. Well, greetings, Earthlings. You have been teleconnected to an arena designed to test your worthiness to join the intergal the intergalactic, not intergalactic, paraglomerate. And you want the sound connected? Yeah, sure. You need to read the rules? Yep. Rules are fairly simple. You'll start each round with the amount of energy earned during the last round. You'll have 2,000 units the first time you enter the arena. Opponents are not so powerful, but there will be 10 of them. Try to keep them weak. They multiply at high energy levels. Your objective is to retain most of your energy in the arena and cause all of your opponents to expire. Okay, then. Okay, so it looks like the way this works is you ram into an opponent, and whoever's energy level is higher wins that that um that hand-to-hand -hand combat. But then you also have the grid feature in order to sort of, like, trap or get rid of enemies. Okay. I'm going to guess that was an attempt at music. Um, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we've got some weird sound effects going on here. Hey, so I'm guessing the Omega symbol is, is me. Okay, we seem to be playing at a decent pace here. So how are you supposed to know how much energy something has? Okay, so I see that one of them actually got stuck on that grid that I placed down there. Yeah, because you can't exactly see the energy levels of your opponents. So I'm not entirely certain how you're supposed to win this. <laughs> like, I mean, I've also got barbs and traps. So if I put down a barb, what does that do? I'm not sure. What about if I put down a trap? 
Like, maybe the trap hurts the enemies? I don't know. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess I could try attacking one of these things, but I got a funny feeling I'm not going to survive that. Oh, I see how it works. And then once you're in combat, you don't actually have a... You don't actually have the ability to escape combat once you're in it. Interesting. So maybe the trick is you want to put down a grid first and then attack something that's in the grid? Oh, I over... Overwrote my own grid there. And I'm actually almost out of energy here. So, you've run out of energy. And top score 10,105. Okay. Uh, so, that was Axtrans, I think. That's kind of a weird game. Um, very basic. Very, well, at least it plays properly, but yeah, very basic, very difficult to really tell what you're doing since it comes down to a numbers game, but you, it's not a numbers game you can theoretically win because of the way it's all hidden from the player. I don't know. This almost feels like something that would work better if you actually had like a full graphical interface going on. And then you could have like health bars for the enemies and stuff. But the way it is here, it's just kind of a gamble as to whether or not you're actually going to succeed or not. And we're ending on a team dig today from JP Ronnie and Jay the Brain Man. We've got win games backslash WC backslash BBB rat 30, maybe? So either this is going to have something to do with bratty kids or rats. So <laughs> it's either going to be one or the other. So yeah, this is going to be bratty kids. So because we got a baby brat.exe there, help file, text, and write. This file here is probably a self-extractor. Or no, this one's probably this. Or, wait. <laughs> well, we got some WAV files. We got multiple order forms. That's kind of weird. Uh, let's see what the help says. Baby Brats. Win Arcade by Albert Ashton. That's another name we've seen before. So, Feeding Crying Babies, Super Playroom, version 3.0, volume 7. <laughs> Version 3.0, Volume 7. <laughs> um, I'm almost scared to, to ask, like, how many versions came before this. Oh, wait a minute. Albert Ashton. Low registration fee of 787. We've got this advisory here. How much you want to bet this is just to click on all the things with annoying sound effects game? Okay, so this is why there's actually um, multiple order files, because it almost seems like the the 94 files are for this particular game and other games that the, the guy made in 94, and then the 93 file is for games made earlier. So that's kind of weird that you would have two separate order forms based on when you made a particular game. But then, if this is the person I'm thinking of, then... <laughs> He made a lot of software that was all pretty much carbon copies of each other, just with different graphics and sound. Okay, if this is what I think it's going to be, prepare your ears. Please press enter. Please press enter. Please press enter. Please press enter. Oh boy. Please press enter. Please press enter. Please press enter. So that Please press, press enter, enter sound is Please going to enter. continue Please forever, press. so... Thank you. <laughs> oh there you boy. Are. There you are. Is it gonna keep doing there that? Are. There you are. Yeah, I think it's gonna just keep or no, wait, it stopped. Sort of. And now it's just digging a bunch. Um Why is it doing this? Well, I mean it's letting me move the window, so it's not frozen. Um so if this works anything like his other stuff, I'm going to guess that... There you are. Okay, about just brings up this screen. Gets rid of the dinging. Thank you. But now we're back to weirdness. There you are. Okay, so what's the menu say? Okay, so menu just tells us literally how to use the menu. <laughs> okay, should we try playing this? It's literally just going to be a click on all the there things. Or in this case, click on all the babies. Yep, that's literally all this is. Click on all the babies with the baby bottle mouse cursor. 
Oh boy. I mean, to give this guy credit, <laughs> sort of, he did pump out a massive number of these games in such a short span of time. <laughs> but it, the only reason that was possible was because he was basically making, taking one game, <laughs> one basic game, and putting a new coat of paint on it like a dozen times. <laughs> Okay, so I think we got our fill of this one. Um, yeah, that was Baby Bratz. About as annoying as that constant dinging sound that won't go away now. Thank you.